Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Russian-born jazz pianist Yelena Ekimov. She talked about her newest 2019 CD called Colors. So her parents noticed that she had musical talent when she started to play piano by ear at the age of four. At seven, she was accepted into the elite Genesis School for Musically Gifted Children in Russia, and it was in 1991 with her husband that she came to the United States. While assimilating and surviving in a new country, she decided to raise her children, and she put her musical career on hold. But during those years, she experimented with the synthesizer and MIDI sequencer in her home studio. That led to her very first jazz album, called Cold Sun in 2009, and she has been at it ever since. She's full of wisdom and stories, so get to know her and dig this interview, my friends. Well, Yelena, it's finally nice to catch up with you here at Neon Jazz. I've been a fan. I've listened to your albums for quite some time. I really enjoy the latest one, Colors, and I'm really happy to talk to you about it. Thank you. You've got a great story, and I, I guess I want to start with The Ever-Present, which is your latest album, Colors. And I want to know, what was your artistic vision with this release? It's uh, kind of simple. I, I decided to um, acquire another like concept in my series of conceptual albums, and uh, especially after I had uh, um, an album about um, smells, uh, Blumenthal Vlogs. I uh, kind of like thought, well, you know, smells, of course, may be harder, but colors may be easier, but it's still, I haven't done it. (laughs) It's almost like uh, I wanted to continue the trend. At first, I didn't know how to approach it, and uh, anything like just talking about colors uh, would be kind of corny, but um, it just came to me one day, you know, uh, that I should... I thought about how people are born, uh, usually in a hospital, in a kind of whitish walls and uh, surrounding, and uh, and uh, how they are so like piece of blank canvas, which is not so has not no colors, just white, and so it's kind of like uh, gave me um, a direction uh, to to follow, and then I uh, decided to approach colors as stages of life. That's wonderful. I love that metaphor. I love that visual. That's great. And, and and I get that feeling about your music. It's very deep. There's nothing about what you're doing that's just kind of on the surface. You really dig below. Is that kind of the way you are as a person? Is that your aim as a jazz musician? It comes just like I was born with uh, this uh, desire to express myself. I was doing a lot of different like uh, ways of expression and drawing and you know, when I was little, I, I was dancing also. I was trying to do any, everything. I kind of like, uh, I remember my fifth year, year old birthday. I, I was dreaming how I'm, I'm gonna get in front of my guests <laughs> and huh. play them a song and show, show them my drawing and dance. <laughs> so it's Wonderful. kind of like, I guess, uh, comes from my personality. Like, I always want to express myself. And I started to compose it uh, uh, like a, almost like four years old uh, when I started to play by ear. And my mom, as a pianist, she was writing down whatever I played. And I, actually, I have that uh, notebook. And, and it, amazingly, I was not Mozart definitely, but amazingly, I had it made sense. And I remember that I called my pieces like birds in the forest, uh, fishes in, in a pond, and all, like a squirrel uh, eats nuts and all, all that stuff. You talked about learning by ear. You were born and raised in Moscow. And my question is this. You've been in the United States long enough now. When you think back to your life, how did growing up in Moscow shape the way you view art and the way you decided to become a creator? Well, Moscow, of course, uh, is a capital of uh, former Soviet Union. And, of course, it, it had, like, the best, of everything, and especially I was in the best school of Moscow um, for musically gifted children, so we had, like, I was so fortunate to have, like, the cream of all kind of teachers, um, and I think that was very important for me because just from the very beginning, I I was exposed to all kind of, like, uh, you know, exquisite teaching, and uh, in my school, um, there was no brainwashing. 
<laughs> it was a special school for gifted children, and uh, we didn't have uh, as much, you know, all that kind of political stuff as in normal schools. I was growing up completely like apolitical and just immersed in art. Wonderful. So I guess my question is this. Did you always have a dream of becoming a jazz musician and moving to the United States? No, no, of course not. I never even thought it about it, like not just dreamed, but you never even could even even have a thought to to actually move from Russia anywhere. And um, of course, I did not uh, dream to become a jazz musician. I was um, brought up as classical concert pianist, and um, I just started to uh, get interested in in other styles, uh, just randomly. I mean, I guess. Uh, some people are more curious than others, but also uh, when I heard uh, one time, I remember some one of my friends said, well, it's so cool, like something about uh, jazz, and I, I thought, what can be cool about it? Because I completely don't understand it. And it was when I was like, I don't know, early, my early teenage. And um, then I thought, well, if he likes it and I don't, it may be problem not with him, but with me. And I started to dig into the different styles. Uh, I remember uh, when I first, you know, listened to Beatles, I was scared because when I put a little vinyl on my, you know, vinyl player and it started to, you know, I think it's uh, Can't Buy Me Love song and, and the drums went in and I, I, I went, I, I just was so intimidated I actually even go, went into another into another room <laughs> and listened to them there. <laughs> So it was like uh, it was not an easy way for me to to kind of get myself uh, uh, broaden my horizon, but of course uh, you know it happened as you can see, <laughs> and I even studied jazz uh, traditional jazz in a Moscow Moscow jazz studio, like in my early twenties, and it, it was very like eye opening. All kind of you know I played in a band and we played. Whatever we did, what I don't, I cannot say we played like whatever. But it was kind of jazz or jazz rock, and whatever we did. But it was fine um, education for me, I guess, in early stages. So let me ask you this: in the beginning, when you got into jazz, what musicians really made an impact on you? What albums did you listen to? Well, I guess well that was. Um, uh, Dave Brubeck came to Moscow and uh, to the jazz studio. He he performed in the Moscow jazz studio. Uh, we had a big hall there, and uh, it was definitely eye-opening event for me. But also, like you know, like, like I say, it, 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 at that time we were studying the Evergreens and Duke Ellington and Joe Pass and Oscar Peterson and uh, Errol Garner, all of those you know older musicians. And we were uh, kind of like exploring that, you know, how they wrote the so wrote solos, how they played. Uh, we were like copying, uh, interpreting their improvisations. I remember like writing it down and studying it. <laughs> but of course, I, I I'm not a, a bebop player myself, and uh, you know, I just used uh, the, I, the the idea that I. And, you know, like idiom of jazz in my composing. I did not want to become a traditional jazz pianist. You know, you're born with this, and you've, from a young age, you've cultivated this uh, desire to be creative and to create. But what did school, you're a well-educated person, you've got a master's degree, you've been in the educational environment. What did they teach you in school about music? Well, of course, my all my education was in Russia, and of course, uh, we had like very extensive studying of uh, music, uh, world music, of course, uh, folk music also, but uh, we didn't have anything to do with uh, pop music or jazz. Of course, that was pop music or jazz music was uh, something that I, I just on my own, I studied on my own. The rest of it, you know, was just very like, I, I think yes, we, we had like... Um, Anything that you could imagine, you know, by my hours that, uh, you know, actually what, what I have equivalent of what I, my education in Russia was like actually PhD here in America. <laughs>
1991, you come to the United States with your husband. What kind of culture shock was it to come over here, and how did you kind of get woven into society here? Well, the, the, the main shock was not the culture shock. The main shock was the language barrier, because uh, at that time, uh, we, of course, we were studying uh, English, and I was studying English since second grade, but it was British uh, way to pronounce words, and also, of course, you, you know, it helped because you have some vocabulary, you have... You, you can read, uh, write, but you could, I mean, I, I couldn't really speak. <laughs> that was a big problem. And uh, I, I could speak a little, and I, I pretty much didn't understand anything that people said. Okay. Well, and that was the shock, of course. But uh, we expected it, I, I guess. We weren't like little kids. We, we knew what we're going to, you know, find ourselves in and sit and uh, the culture, of course, uh, it wasn't completely like we we didn't understand where we are going. There were movies that we watched, American movies, and you know, kind of like uh, you know, we had a nice, uh, some idea about life here. But of course, uh, I mean, a lot a lot of it was a pleasant surprise, not not vice versa. <laughs> the first time we, we went to supermarket, there was like we thought we we were in paradise. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing too is is that you put your career on hold when you came here. You raised children, but you still played the keyboard and the synthesizer. Was it a great relief when you finally did release your first album, Cold Sun? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, I never stopped, uh, of course, playing. And I actually, when we came to America, that's what the first thing uh, um, we were trying to get me, me a piano and. And that's another story, but uh, there were some people who donated money, so I got myself a, a used, cheap used spinet piano and started immediately, you know, uh, prepare the, the program for, a, you know, classical music program for concert and, and gave my first concert uh, about a year after we came here uh, to America and, uh, of course, continued composing and, and uh, that um, then when we... Um, bought a house, you know, we had n no money because we didn't bring any money with us, with nothing. We, we we came with $20 that we, we borrowed because we had to, you know, come. To, well, it's a very long story. But anyway, we had no money, and, um, of course, it was hard, but we worked very hard. And we, we like, really, like, a lot of immigrants do the same thing. They just, you know, they're more efficient, I guess, in their money spending and everything. So my husband decided that he need, he'll, he'll buy me an electronical equipment that I would be able to, uh, because it was like at that time, it was also very like big thing, you know, starting. But it all helped me to continue. And uh, I think working with a sequencer is really like was a good ear training also, continuing ear training because I, I would sequence up to like 20, 30 tracks and work on every note and listen to everything. So it's kind of, I think now we're working Pro Tools and I think it helped me. It was a long way because, uh, you know, I could not, of course, do much when kids were growing and um, I had to, you know, be a house mom. Then I, I started to work with some local musicians and I had a band, local band, for like two, three years, I guess, three years maybe. And as per that, I just kind of naturally progressed into uh, working with uh, really good musicians because I, I felt like I'm ready for, I mean, I felt like I'm ready for real challenge and real, you know, stuff because I knew, I, in my mind, I knew that what I want, I don't, ha I don't have yet. I, and that was a step when I um, involved Matt Swinding from Denmark in playing with me and then Peter Erskine liked what we did and so so forth that uh, the rest is history. <laughs> Are you happy with where your career is at right now? I think I should be satisfied because uh, I was completely no, um, nowhere um, in 2010 when I was reading my, my first proper album, uh, Cold Sun, and uh, of course it's, it took like short time, I guess, for me to actually get somewhere and be recognized and um, especially like p produce all those uh, wonderful albums with uh, wonderful musicians. I say wonderful albums not because I'm like say well how how well 
I am producing them, but because, you know, the musicians who played um, on my albums are, were absolutely, you know, astonishing, and they did such a great job that uh, uh, a lot of times it's just uh, critics might say that they sound b better than ever on my album. So that's why I'm very proud of this, and I'm very happy about um, what is going on. I'm very happy to uh, let... Uh, these musicians um, sometimes play with each other, like Peter Erskine and Ariel Thunderson played together first time on my album. Like uh, Manu Katia, uh always wanted to record a piano and drum duo. In the past, he said that uh, he was about to record it with Keith Jarrett, but something happened and it didn't come through. So he was very excited when I offered him to record piano and drums duo, and, and he was happy with the results, so it made me happy too things like that so it's not just my it's not not like entirely about my career but i think being a composer and pianist i also kind of think that my producing uh, is important too that i um think about those albums and i think about musicians who i would involve and put together certain bands that sometimes are uh, unlikely or maybe likely but never happened so why do you love jazz well, because um, this is like Billy Hart uh, said, um, like when we recorded Lions, uh, he, I was never sure what I'm doing, but uh, he explained it to, that uh, a lot of composed pieces would become a jazz, and so I'm doing something prophetic with uh, the approach which I take the composing and also setting my compositions into the jazz um, uh, like so, uh, uh, just set up that uh, it, he called it a prophetic way, and he said Wayne Shorter, you know, started this trend. And um, uh, so, for me, jazz is 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 a way to enrich uh, and absolutely like uh, you know the new way to compose. Um, I like traditional jazz, of course. I like to listen to all kind of jazz, but I think. Jazz is bigger now than just a style. It's, I think it's just the way to uh, to go for the classic, even for the classical music, the way to go because after classical music reached that kind of like the dead end, even uh, you know, in the, that point when you know it became so disconnected and weird that you know it didn't have any way to go. And now I think it is going now with the help of other styles and jazz. In particular, and uh, of course, the the improvising uh, has a lot to do with it because uh, that's the freedom. That's the something that you never expect. You you can compose everything, and then you bring the piece into the group, and you we, when you play, then everything can can just change. <laughs> and yeah. it's a wonderful thing. Absolutely. So this is my final question for you. Let's say you come to Kansas City. And you have to write up an advertisement to explain the way your show is going to be, the way your sound is. How would you describe it? Uh, how would I describe uh, my uh, the sound? Your sound and the way a show would be. I guess uh, this is uh, the combination of modern jazz, uh, of the the trend that you know trend that uh, ECM records kind of like outlined, but uh, also. Uh, it's just uh, my own, like the expression of my own um, experience and my feelings and the skills that I have, and uh, it, it kind of definitely it's 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 a combination between through composed music and improvisation. I I kind of hope it it is unique because in that way because um, I have not I don't I don't know if there are like other you know composers or jazz players who sound exactly like like I do I, I haven't heard so you have your very own unique voice in the world of jazz and thank you for opening up today thank you for talking about the new album colors about your world and music and your move to the United States I appreciate it well and thank you Joe for having me on your program thanks for listening and tuning in to yet another neon jazz interview where we give you a bit of insight into the finest jazz players in russia america and all over the world giving fans all that jazz and thanks to yelena for her time and her wisdom 
If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.